getting to see some of these scenes in this week's episode of Overlord animated was definitely one of the highlights of my week because the Hamsuke scenes definitely one of the best like to see him animated talking moving Navai saying like you are fluffy Th that was just so cute adorable and Hamsuke is definitely MVP just such an adorable little creature. I mean, yes, he's a little hamster or a giant ass hamster. I'm sorry, not small. He's a giant ass hamster, but it's just, it's it's so cute. And I mean, after reading the light novel and seeing his character in the light novel and seeing him animated, it just adds an entirely different appreciation for his character that I really like when I see him animated in Overlord. So definitely very funny. And the voice actor is definitely nailing Hamsuke. Oh yeah, just fucking nailing that character. So, getting to the point, Overlord this week, very, very, very on point. Definitely on point. We get to see some insight of Ainz's character that I want to take a few moments to talk about, because Ainz is definitely a very interesting character. I think a lot of us can really say, kind of, gets us into Overlord. Like, I think Ainz is one of the main reasons why we all love Overlord so much, is because he's just so fucking badass. And to get into this, we get to see some of Ainz's mentality this week in Overlord, and we kind of already gotten hints at this and a little bit of dialogue that kind of hints towards this, but it was very obvious for anime only to actually see and witness some of the personality traits of Ainz after watching this episode. As we saw for the past couple episodes, we've been traveling around with these humans with Ainz, and they are kind of a new party, like a new guild, they're kind of shit tier, and they can't really do much at all, and we got to see how Ainz is completely outclassing them in every way, but we've been around them for the past couple episodes, and so that's given us time to kind of interact with these characters, and slightly grow connected with them, not that much, but grow connected somewhat because you know they were around for multiple episodes not just you know half an episode or one episode so to see them cut down and killed like that you thought or we would have thought that Ainz would have had some form of connection with these characters because let's you know take a few moments and backpedal real quick to some normal main characters of any series if a main character was to travel with certain people like new people okay he was going on a business trip and all that and when he met these people he got to talk with them he sh uh, shared some conversations over food and different things like that with them i mean eventually if these characters died or these people died the main character would be very upset and probably cry get upset different things like that take out his rage and frustration on the person that did that that's kind of what would usually happen and after witnessing how Ainz acted it wasn't really like that Ainz said this, quote for quote, well not exactly quote for quote because I can't really remember the entire dialogue, but I'll get as close as I can. Pretty much he says, is these people that I was associating with that were on this trip with me for protecting this dude was just stepping stones for me to increase my fame and say fuck you everybody else because I'm increasing Nazrik and Ainz. And I'm like, yo, just when you see that it just goes to show you how Ainz thinks. Like, he doesn't care. He, he doesn't care about these people that were it recently introduced to him they're new people they're fodder to him he doesn't care and as he said to clementine at the end of the episode he can't really get angry at clementine for killing these people resurrecting them as undead and doing certain things like she did because what ein said was what instantly detaches him away from the standard mc we see from these type of series he says like if our situations were kind of different i might have done the exact same and so what Ainz was implying at that moment moment at the end of this episode was that if the situation kind of called for it he would have killed his own traveling companions he would have killed them and he would have resurrected them in some way or he might have done it to other people what clementine did in this episode so it shows you Ainz is willing to step over that line he's willing to go over that line that a normal main character would not cross over so Ainz is willing to go into the borderline of just straight up fucking evil very cool. Very, very cool. And that that's why one of the main reasons why I wanted to read the light novel so bad. Because I saw some hints of this in the beginning episodes of Overlord, and so I decided to take a shot at the light novel, I and mean, I saw it for myself of how how fucked up his character is, but I'll, I'll save that for another day, or, you know, how I talked about earlier today in that, you know, light novel discussion video. But back on point, okay? 
Ainz, we get some in-depth look at his character, which now, since I've explained, I think everybody understands now, Ainz is not like a normal character. He is kind of fucking evil. And then also, on top of that, you have it to where Ainz can't really look down on Clementine because he would have done the exact same. And he would be a hypocrite if you went after her and got in a rage because she killed those people. So it goes to show you once again what type of person he is. And then even further, Hamsuke being at, like animated and active in this episode with his voice actor fucking on point in greatness i just and not enough greatness can be added to that scene but back into some of certain points of this episode i really like how the skeleton scene was done i do have to admit when it came to the cgi with the skeletons it was a little grotesque so to say because it wasn't the best cgi i've ever seen and I, I don't expect flawless CGI all the time. And I mean, I've kind of expected this from Overlord. Some of the CGI has been a little bit crusty, but it's nothing too bad. But I do admit it's not the best I've seen, especially when you saw all those skeletons moving at once. It just kind of looked a little bit awkward. But still, the way Ainz was just going in through these army of skeletons and just fucking whacking them and kicking their ass, like, he was just eviscerating everybody. Like, it, it didn't even matter. Like, these skeletons were just walking up like, I'm gonna take this dude, I'm gonna get this dude. And just Ainz like, boom, 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 just fucking filleting these guys like they're nothing. And it just goes to show you how strong Ainz is just to do this to undead like it's nothing. Like, he, he's just cutting them up and they're like they're butter. And then you just see him just shattering. And then all of a sudden, he just summons his, you know, undead. He's like, Jack the Reaper, and then Corpse Eye thing. I forget the exact full name. It's like Corpse something, but, you know, Corpse Collector. That's it. Corpse Co Collector, and then Jack the Ripper. I like those summons, because the way I summoned those, and they were just so damn strong. Like, they were so strong compared to everything else. Like, I mean, look what they were doing to the other undead. They were just destroying them, grabbing them by their face, slamming them on the ground, cutting them up. It was just way too easy for Ainz's minions to destroy them. So it just goes to show you that, once again, Ainz is in an entirely new league. But we have to wonder now, how strong is Clementine? Because she says some of the strongest people in the kingdom are as strong as her. She's stronger than them. So it goes to show you how strong Clementine is. Is she strong? Will she put up a challenge against Ainz? That is the big question we have to wonder right now after watching this episode. But yeah, Overlord, very on point, and I love for what it did. Ainz is mainly worrying about his fame and fortune and really not caring about anyone else as long as he can move up the ladder of fame for Nazarick. Gotta love that shit. So tell me your thoughts in the comments below. You all have a wonderful day or night wherever you live. Please be safe. Chibi out.